Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be discussing benefit cost analysis. It is a method to evaluate projects and separate project alternatives and uh, examine both benefits and the costs, which is exactly what it sounds like. So first thing that we need to discuss is what the concept of a benefit cost ratio is. It's very simple. First thing you do is you calculate the benefits of all project alternatives, so this at a single point in time or an equivalent annual worth, so um, you can calculate the net present value or the equivalent annual worth or the future value of everything. Just make sure to calculate the same one for each each cost, each benefit that you're calculating it for. Um, so basically just discount the benefits in time to a specific point in time. Uh, you do, then do the same thing for the costs of the project, and the benefit to cost ratio is the benefits divided by the costs. If the benefit cost ratio is uh, greater than one, or the benefits are greater than the cost, the project is economically feasible. If it's less than one, it is not economically justified, and if it is close to one, then we're talking about like a sort of a toss-up. You might want to go ahead and do that for political reasons or other reasons that uh, would be helpful, but they, you wouldn't really be making any money on it. So let's do an example. This is example 10-2 in the book for anyone who is following along in that. Um, the city of Columbia is considering extending the runways of its municipal airports so that commercial jets can use the facility. So use an end of 20 years and a discount rate of 10%. So below here is a table of the costs. So you can see we've got three costs that are not annual, so those are going to be upfront costs. There's land acquisition, runway construction, and the cost of a new terminal. And then there's two operating and maintenance costs of the different facilities that they built, and then the air traffic control wages, which they're estimating as annual costs. Similarly, we have a table of benefits. Um, these are all annual, so they're not expecting any immediate uh, rewards on their investment. But um, So airline lease space, passenger taxes, tourism increase in the convenience benefit for the residents of Columbia. So something that they're trying to quantify is convenience for uh, the Columbia City's residents. So this is something that benefit cost analysis is pretty good for, is that they take benefits that may not be monetary and try and estimate a monetary value for them so you can try and uh, compare that to what you're paying for. So if you're paying a lot of money but you're getting convenience back, then you have to figure out what that's worth. And benefit cost analysis, that's a part of benefit cost analysis. So let's go ahead and calculate the net present value of both the costs and the benefits. Remember we had $1,200,000 in total upfront costs and then a, another $197,500 in annual operation, maintenance, and wages, um, and then we have to discount back that annual cost back to the present at 10% rate for 20 years. Similarly, we have to do the same thing with the benefits, which is $490,000 in annual income, uh, then multiply by the same factor, and the uh, benefit cost ratio is going to be the present worth of the benefits divided by the present worth of the costs, so that is 1.448. So the uh, benefits do outweigh the costs. The ratio is greater than one. So Columbia would be justified in building the new runway. Uh, so just a quick note that you can treat cash flows differently and achieve the same result, but it will have a different magnitude. So in other words, if you want to treat a saved cost as a benefit, you can add it to the numerator, or you can treat it as a negative cost and subtract it from the denominator. So either of these are going to work. So this is part of the reason that you cannot use this 
to directly compare alternatives and select an alternative using benefit cost ratio. Uh, just because one project has a benefit cost ratio of two, for say, for example, uh, and another one has a benefit cost ratio of, for example, 1.7, the one with the higher benefit cost ratio is not necessarily better because you could be treating your benefits as saved costs or you could be treating your saved costs as benefits. So that's going to change what your ratio is. So it's a little subjective. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can compare project alternatives using this. So you cannot just take the project with the highest benefit cost ratio and say that is the best project. Uh, instead we have to incrementally compare the two projects or compare two projects at a time. Uh, so if you have a list of five projects for example you'd have to go one by one and eliminate them. Uh, this is going to be best served by an example. So let's consider four following alternatives with uh, the uh, costs and benefits stated below them. Um, so it should be noted that these are going to be present worths in, in millions of dollars. So project A is a present worth of $21.32 million and a cost of $15.93 million. Um, okay, so the first thing that we have to do is see if one project dominates another project. What that means is we have to see does an alternative have lower benefits and a higher cost than at least one al other alternative? Why would you, you would never select a project that has less benefit at a higher cost than another project, right? So that is a quick way to eliminate some projects. Um, so if we look at alternative D, it has a benefit of $21.82 million and a cost of $18 million, which is both more expensive than alternative B, right, it costs uh, a little bit more, and it provides less benefit. So what we do is we say that B dominates A, and we remove it. Uh, additionally, you're going to remove any projects that have a benefit cost ratio of less than one because that is not economically justifiable. Uh, it's also not really a big deal if you don't catch these right off the bat. It just means that you're going to have to make an additional calculation later on, so it's going to cost you time more than anything. Um, so yeah. So let's go ahead and eliminate D. And then we want to order our projects from the cheapest price to the most expensive, uh, which they are already in that order. So we don't really have to rearrange them, but that's going to determine the order that you compare the projects in. So next we select A and B. These are their two cheapest projects that were left. Uh, and we want to determine if the incremental benefit of choosing project B over project A justifies the incremental cost of choosing project B over project A. So notice with A as a baseline, it is the second term in the equation. And what we're going to do is calculate the incremental benefits. So how much additional benefit does project B get you? And at how much additional cost? So project B gets you a fairly small, like $1.14 million in benefits, but costs a little bit more than that, right? So just by looking at that, you can see that. Um, it's about 1.2 something, 2, 2, 4, 1.24. Uh, so you're getting $1.14 million in benefits and an additional $1.24 million in cost. That is going to mean that the uh, incremental benefit ratio is less than 1. So we say that project B is not incrementally better than project A and eliminate project B. Next we have to compare project A to project C. So we got rid of B, now we want to look at what our additional, uh, our other project is. So we again do the same calculation and this time the ratio is greater than 1, it's 1.16, so 
in this case, we eliminate project A. So we eliminate the baseline project if the incremental ratio is greater than 1. We eliminate the new project or additional project if the uh, ratio is less than 1. So let's go ahead and eliminate A. So since there is not a uh, since there's not a um, additional project, we're out of project C is the last one left, and we would suggest C using this method. Um, if there was an additional project, say project E, we would then go compare project C to project E with um, C being the baseline project and E being the new project. But there isn't. We recommend project C. Okay. So now let's go ahead and discuss a little bit of how this is different than just finding the net present value. So analyzing the benefit cost ratio is a great way to understand the return you are expected to get at each cost. So you could say, okay, the, if the B over C ratio is two, that means you're doubling your money over the life of the project. Um, but that doesn't really tell you how much money you're getting, right? The net present value just tells you the total return without really considering what the costs are. So these are both important to look at. Let's go ahead and say we've got two example projects. We've got project A with the cost of $500,000. Sorry, the tables go horizontally now. So project A is a cost of $500,000 and a benefit of $700,000. And then say we have project B with a cost of $100,000 and a benefit of $250,000. So you can see that the benefit cost ratio of project A is 1.4, right? You're not really doubling your money or anything. You're making 40% additional money. But you have a total net present value of $200,000 which is more than you would get in project B even though you're getting a better return on your investment. So part of what you have to consider is alright first of all if you wanted to say choose project B over project A what would you spend the additional money on, right? If you could spend that four hundred thousand dollars and make at least fifty thousand dollars then choosing project B would be a good choice, right? You're at least able to match the return total return on project A. But if that $400,000 just sits around and does not do anything, then you're better off investing it and getting the $200,000 even though the percentage return on your investment is not quite as good. So these are both interesting things to consider and I hope you learned a lot today. Thank you very much.